So um, I'm going to go live here and, and share our uh, actual Synote page. Um, so um, if you're already a user, this should look familiar. But if you're not, this is the overview page. So this is just where any of the users that are assigned to a specific task um, will see um, what, I guess, um, elements of the projects need attention. Um, there's a nice little calendar, um, as well as the recent work. So if you um, are in a position like myself, where you're one of the account um, administrators, as well as uh, serving in some sort of lab manager role, it's also really nice to be able to track what the recent work um, on your Synode account has been um, to ensure that uh, just at a broad uh, overview or a quick glance, you can see the productivity of your lab. Um, but honestly, I uh, even though we start on the overview, overview page, I spend the most amount of time in the projects area. So here you can see where we've organized our projects. Um, and as I've mentioned before to Clement and others at Synote, uh, one of my favorite updates is this incorporation of folder organization. So you heard uh, Kelly mention our driving rats and we've had multiple cohorts of these animals now. So I've actually separated um, and, and distinguished a folder for each of those cohorts of driving rats. Um, you also heard that we work with uh, animals that are not traditionally utilized in neuroscience research, one of those being the raccoons. Um, and so just to give you a quick glance, when I open our raccoon folder here, you can see our various raccoon studies. Um, in fact, this is the one that was just published in the journal of comparative neurology. Um, and so as I go through my different layers, you can see I'm getting closer and closer to looking at the actual uh, project details. Um, so just for um, cohesive um, and, and generalizable uh, information, I wanted to start with our uh, grant project um, that's funded through the National Institutes of Mental Health. Um, and this is another um, project that I thought was worth highlighting for you all because it's not uh, a single user who's working on this project. I don't know. Uh, many cases where there's a single person, um, but maybe a graduate student who's got uh, most of the ownership of a project, but here, especially with our undergrads and as well as having a post back in the lab um, and a research technician, it's a really um, collaborative environment, not only with other institutions, but within our lab itself. And so I just wanted to uh, utilize this example um, because it's such an all hands on deck example. So, um, most grants, uh, as you know, are typically split into different specific aims. And so even though I have one project um, being uh, this uh, grant um, project, I have different sub projects or experiments um, that are uh, named based on the specific aim in which they are uh, encompassing. And so specific aim one here um, is one of our first um, uh, kind of uh, forays, I guess, into kind of adapting Synote into our uh, lab and the way that we work. Um, and this did take some time to really think about how best to adapt the way that the grant was written and the way that we typically do our science at the bench into a digital format that is capable of being um, understood by not only the users that are creating this task flow, but those that are going to come back and be able to follow what we did in the future. So one of the things that the postback uh, Emily here and I um, kind of, I guess, settled on was the fact that we need kind of a um, a home base or, um, you know, kind of a central point where the entire web is going to be created from. And so what we've created here is that every single experiment or project that we use starts with animal information because that is um, a constant across nearly all of our experiments. We will always have either uh, rats in the lab that we're working on behavior and then follow up uh, immunohistochemistry or other tissue studies, or we'll receive brain tissue from other collaborating labs. So it all applies. Um, so we always start with this animal information tab. And let me just go scale down just a second so you guys can actually see this. Um, so when we're creating our web, um, one of the things that we really spent a lot of time 
working through and kind of customizing for our needs was the fact that we didn't have uh, streamlined or what I would say more linear processes where you start with, um, you know, a single step, something like um, a qPCR experiment or a Western blot or an ELISA where it's very linear where there's clearly a step one, two, three, four, etc. Um, and a, you'll notice again if you're a user of Synote um, that a lot of the demos um, and fairly so for clarity they are very linear processes with these webs. However, our lab and I know a number of other biomedical laboratories um, and other neuroscience focused laboratories that utilize preclinical models um, aren't just looking at the tissue side, you're also looking at behavior. And so this is where we've really created this ability to kind of branch um, and create a nonlinear task flow. So because we have our central hub here of our animal information, and I'll go into those um, in just a couple minutes to show you a little more detail. We branch um, all of our behavior in one direction, which then becomes linear because they are in a systematic flow. And then we can create other branches from that original starting point that um, target our endpoint uh, analyses, whether that be um, immunohistochemistry or other uh, wet lab experiments that we're doing in an uh, ex vivo format. So you can see here, this experiment and this project um, starts with behavioral training. And then we're interested, obviously, in how that behavior is affecting um, how the brain is operating and changing between a treatment group and a control group. And so with, then we're utilizing um, aspects like uh, neurochemical changing changes through immunohistochemistry targets. So here are a very common BDNF target, uh, double cortin. Um, those are uh, antibodies that we use often in the lab, as well as looking at a neuroendocrine um, glance. So we're looking at corticosterone um, and DHEA as two hormones of interest, and those are ELISA kits. Um, and so then the really nice thing that uh, Emily actually, our postback came up with was even though within each of these tasks, there are places where you can upload protocols and upload results, just to keep everything streamlined and a quick way to see overview results, we always end our um, task flow with a final results section. So it's kind of like a starting point and an end point with the web kind of uh, branching out in the middle, but it's a nice um, home plate, um, you know, a start and a finish. And so it's um, a lot different than, than some of the demos that are provided by Synote, but this we are finding this format is working really, really nicely for keeping everything um, in, in, I guess, order of what we would uh, anticipate how the project's going to go, as well as having um, a targeted area that we can selectively um, click on what um, experiment or what um, stage of that project that we're interested uh, in looking at its progress. So um, it is important, I think, uh, just because I, I trust that um, everybody's going to want to kind of have that hub of, uh, of like, you know, what animals were used, um, what were the protocols involved, what was the timeline. Um, so when I open that task of our animal information, you can see under the notes I've listed our approved protocol. One of my favorite things too about Synote is that I can actually um, link from the inventory, the actual animals that are utilized in this uh, project. And that's shown right here. So these are our animals um, that are assigned to that task flow. And then the animal information doesn't have a protocol necessarily, um, but in other downstream tasks, we would certainly link a protocol. Um, so speaking of inventories, let me just take you there really quickly. Um, so we have, um, quite a few animals in the lab, but it's also um, more and more the case these days that we're getting uh, a collection of exotic brains. <laughs> so um, I thought it was really important to uh, create an inventory for kind of our in-house 
uh, laboratory rats that are in our vivarium and then have other inventories for all of our uh, tissue as well as um, this new project that we're working on the wild rats um, because they are trapped locally but obviously they are not housed in any of our facilities um, I felt like that was important to have another inventory. And of course, our standard chemical um, inventory and antibody inventory. So this I really have enjoyed um, getting able to put some students on these projects because if you have a student user, they can upload to the inventory as well. And you can just see we have a um, list of your standard uh, antibodies and your um, other chemicals and reagents that you might need. Um, and then I've also added these different um, columns to see where did they come from, where are they stored, are they hazardous, just basic things um, that might be um, known by a few, but it's important that it's accessible by all. So let me go back to our lab rats as well, because one thing that Synote has helped us um, just in the nature of creating an electronic notebook for our, um, our purpose here in an undergraduate uh, research setting is that we are now standardizing the animals that we receive from vendors. Um, so our uh, vendor here is often in Vigo and they um, will ship us you know, clean, healthy animals, but are otherwise not tagged um, or identified in any way. And so here we can create a standardized nomenclature so that I know uh, what year um, and what animal that is, and you can also link it to different projects. So this is something that I think most labs are already doing, albeit in an Excel format, um, but it's nice to know that you can integrate this directly into your electronic notebook. And again, notice this assigned task um, or tab. This is basically saying that this animal is already assigned to a task flow so I can directly click on this at any time and see what that animal or the tissue from that animal is being, um, uh, how it's being utilized in our um, hands here in the lab. And then the last thing I'll just run through really quickly is the protocols. So here you can see all of our active protocols. Um, you can also see who published it. So this is really helpful with um, timelines and capturing uh, kind of a snapshot of when that protocol was created, who created it, and who would be the best person to verify whether or not that is the most up-to-date um, uh, protocol that you're using. Um, and again, you can link these to different um, tasks. Again, that's the column here. Um, and so, for example, if we're looking at an IHC protocol, I can also uh, tag some of my reagents. So I know exactly what reagent the student doesn't see that it's sodium citrate um, because there can be a few different sodium citrates in the lab depending on which salt you're using. This way I can directly link that uh, item to this protocol and there's no questions left unturned. Um, also I can fill in any notes here um, and include supplies as well as the steps um, that are needed at any time. Um, so because I created this, you'll see an edit. If I did not create this, I would just be able to view it. So that also helps um, kind of with the fidelity of the protocols that things are not easily changed. It's not just a click of a button and it changes. This is a, um, a really nice uh, kind of secure way of creating a timeline of how things are done in the lab. Um, so I will say that it does take a concerted effort um, of a team, you need at least one or two dedicated people to think about how your lab operates and think about ways that are best to disseminate information um, in a way that makes sense, not only to those who are intimately involved in the day-to-day, -day, but those who are coming maybe for a few weeks to shadow uh, or a semester. Um, and so that will take some time to sit and, and you know, think about how to best implement that. Um, but it's not, you know, months and months of work. If you know how to enter things into Excel, if you know how to type up a protocol in Word, it's really just learning the system um, and keeping up with it, right? Anytime that you're utilizing a system 
then and you step away from it for a little while you come back and you're a little rusty um, but it it's pretty easy to pick back up um, and there's updates that are always coming to kind of help make it more user friendly um, so we've really enjoyed having a way to um, utilize what's been set up by Synote's platform and adapting kind of how our lab works to what it can do. Um, and I will say that their team has also been extremely receptive to real roadblocks where I was finding, you know, I have to have the function, you know, this, this capability and, and I can't. And Vid and other team members were very receptive to hearing our concerns and our needs. Um, and I've definitely noticed um, some of those adaptations coming in future updates. Um, so I'm happy to address specific questions or if I've missed anything, please, please let me know. I'm happy to go back over, but this is just kind of our um, year's worth of figuring out how to best integrate um, multiple years of research um, into one platform.